Did you get any pushback from the actual security guards about pushing them out of the way the one night? Pushing them out of the way? I mean, it's on camera, Travis. I didn't push him. I placed my hand on the gentleman's back to let him know I was behind him. If I would have pushed him, he would probably would have turned around and tased me. That sounds like a, a, a way that somebody who pushed somebody would describe pushing them. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, and brought to you by our friends at Experian. 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 All right. Brought to you by the all-new Experian Smart Money debit card and the debit card that builds credit without the debt. Mm. You only get it at Experian, baby. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey. New episodes drop every Wednesday during the NFL season. Subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, 92 percenters, and follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one as Jason. Tell the people what we have coming up. We got a great episode coming up for you guys. We're going to talk about both of our week six games, break down some of our favorite not dumb questions of the week, and look into the biggest storylines coming out of week six in the NFL, including uh, someone making an appearance at SNL, maybe? Yeah, we're going to talk about it. But first, as always, new news. New news coming in hot. New news, old news, still the number one sports podcast on Apple, Spotify, and wherever the the, uh, Swifties get their podcasts at these days. We're still killing it, thanks to all of you (laughs) 92% Swifties and uh, percenters. Everyone's uh, helping us maintain up there, and uh, we sure appreciate you guys tuning in each and every week. Every week. How about that, man? This has been a humbling experience so far this season. Yes, it has. Moving on to fan mentions of the week. All right, now let's uh, let's get to them from the Eagles social media team. They gave us a look at Jason's locker room. Hey, yo. go ahead and click on that. TikTok, Jason. I um, I really thought that I had the worst locker out of both of us. And you not only have a bigger locker, like I have two lockers that are that have like a bunch of sh- just shit in it. Yours is way worse, Travis. Mine just has video evidence. <laughs> it's not by any means as bad as what I just saw. What are you talking about? Dude, you, I mean, absolutely filthy. Just nothing's organized. You have boxes coming out of yours as well. No, I don't. I got rid of them. Well, I just got rid of mine too, so now I don't know who's coming up. Swear to God. <laughs> What'd you do with them? Is that a swear word? Truck? No, Emily came up and we were doing something and uh, she put them in the truck. So what, they're in your garage now? You didn't open the boxes. No, I don't. I don't open. I, as a rule, I I don't open fan mail. Oh, so everything sent to the facility is fan mail? For the most part. Other, or it's like brands trying to like... Get me to put their stuff on New Heights. Well, you heard it from Jason. If you're if you're a brand trying to get your shit on New Heights, don't send it to the facility. <laughs> send it to our intern Brandon's house. I have been getting some interesting fan uh fan mail. Oh, uh, dude, you have no idea. A farm in uh California sent me some grapes. And you tried them? They were delicious. Green grapes. Very delicious. Were they the cotton candy ones? No, just standard green grapes. Yeah, I mean, those are the best grapes, but I hear you. Another person sent me a pen that they made, a handmade pen. A handmade pen? Should we start featuring stuff? Like, I, I kind of like that kind of fan mail. When it's like an object. Oh, I've gotten some weird stuff. A handmade pen. It's a good pen. I'll bring it next episode. I'll show you guys. When I was younger, I used to look at a lot of the fan mail in like my first like two or three years. And then I realized it's just a bunch of old ass men that are trying to get their kid to sign or using like a kid. I don't even know if it'd be their kid or not to try and get uh, stuff signed for them. Yeah, for sure. Well, for them, not for the kid. Yeah, exactly. Don't get me wrong. There's I'm sure that there are some kids that have signed stuff and send it in to get signed. But the reality is the majority of people are looking to resell it or just grown men that are trying to make money off of it. Either way, don't give me an errand to run when you send me fan mail. <laughs> if you give me some grapes, I'll eat the grapes and be very appreciative. But if you're sending me stuff to do something to it and then send it back to you, that's too many it's too many hours. It's put unfair. In to, uh, it's unfair. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not participating. 
Just so you know. To all those kids out there, don't send your card in to the Chiefs at Arrowhead. It's not, you're not, I mean, I probably won't even see it. It's not going to be returned. Yeah. It's not going to get returned. You're just going to lose a card. I can't tell you how many cards I got sitting in those boxes. If you see me in person, I got you all day. As long as it's uh, like, it's like random. Yeah. Don't show up to my front door. Exactly. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Uh, moving on I feel like from we need to cut this entire segment. So it's a rough start right now. It's a rough start. <laughs> it's a rough start. But uh from Huff Dizzle on TikTok, uh we've got an impression of me uh this past weekend. Have you seen this, Jason? Yeah. What'd you think? I watched it earlier. I'm watching was, it again. Was it accurate? I mean, he definitely uses your phrases. All right, Travis, and I understand you're not with the paparazzi and everything. Thought this out. might it was be well a thought new out. to you, but we have to kind of go over some protocol, okay? All right, now. No, Travis, not everything is all right now, okay? <laughs> you, you left out of the Chiefs game with your mustache in a convertible with zero security? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then next thing you know, you know, this past weekend you were on the news shoving me out of the way. New news. Stop <laughs> saying new news. This is good. It's good stuff. It's solid stuff. It's solid stuff. You could tell that they're probably a little bit of a 92 percenter probably. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, if you're saying new news and all right now, you've, you've definitely tuned into the show once or twice. Did you get any pushback from the actual security guards about pushing them out of the way the one night? Pushing them out of the way? I mean, it's on camera, Travis. I didn't push them. I placed my hand on the gentleman's back to let him know I was behind him. If I would have pushed him, he would probably would have turned around and tased me. That sounds like a, a a way that somebody who pushed somebody would describe pushing them. You're ridiculous. I didn't push them. I just put my hand on them and moved them. Good, sir. Can you uh, excuse me? I need to get the door. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you. I'm right behind you. Don't want to startle you. I know it's your job to keep crazy people away. And if you just randomly get pushed in the back while... <laughs> standing in front of a door that could probably be a little alarming no i didn't that didn't one time get uh get security to say anything about it they'll tell you what they're great they're great they're good people have you had to enact any uh security of your own of my own do you feel like you're like a security guard when you're with taylor like i'm part do you of the feel team like yeah like you're <laughs> one with the rest of the guys um like hey I we're in this like together I'm, I fellas I feel like whenever I'm on a date, I'm all, I'm always like having like the sense of like I'm a man in the situation. I I am I'm like protective. Yeah, for sure. You always kind of have that feeling or that uh that self awareness, I guess. Where do you sit when you go into a restaurant? Um, wherever the they have the table. Well, at the table, what seat do you choose? The more convenient one. The like, what do you mean? You choose the seat with the best view of all of your potential threats within the establishment. But what if somebody else wants the view of, like, it's the best view of this entire place? Well, it's your job to protect, Travis, so it's your job to have the best view. No, you just got to know where the exits are. Exits and entrances, yep. You got to know the, where that's gotta at. got to know where those are at. That's Preferably like a need. seat against a wall so that you can observe everything that's happening. No way you're doing this. I, I swear, to, ask Kylie. The moment I go in there, I, I do not like being seated in the middle of a room. I only like being seated up against a wall. Noted. There you go. You ever had security? No, I mean, I'm the security. Well, if you get security, you could probably go right in the middle of the room. <laughs> Let's keep this thing moving. Shout out to the 92 percenters, as always, for all your mentions. And um, yeah, we appreciate you guys uh, doing some impersonations and uh, or in some, some impressions. Jason, clean your fucking locker. And I did. Well, nice. somebody else did. Nice. It's clean. That's the bottom line. All righty. Let's get to it. 92 percenters, the part of the show that we look forward to each and every week. That's right. It's time yeah. for No Dumb Questions. No Dumb Questions is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Woo. Let's go sports bar. All righty. First No Dumb Question is brought to you by at Spur 40. Okay. Do you think rugby players have a chance in the NFL? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, maybe the best. If you get a big dancing bear that plays offensive line. I suppose that is true. We actually do have a former rugby player that is playing in the NFL, Jordan Malata. Uh, But unless you're 6'9", 380 pounds, 
Um, I would say that the chances are limited. It's just a different game. It's a much different game. Everybody keep. I mean, I think people keep comparing them. There's one common skill set, and that's quarterback sneaks. Toughness. Oh, sorry, toughness. Yeah, you might be able to get a a, a kicker. You might be able I to do- get a kicker. There's probably some. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, but we're talking about football players, not there's kickers. A, there's yet. a few Australian uh, punters in the league that I know of. Uh, have there all are. started off being Australian football footy players. Guys. Yeah, there's definitely a uh, kicker would be the best chance or punter. And then if you're an enormously skilled athlete, uh, of course, there's a chance you could play in the NFL. That is always on the table. Always. But as a blanket statement, I'm going to say no. I think that they're much different. Rugby is more the energy systems is like a physical soccer. Like it's a longer. There's not like stoppages and it's not like as like violent if that's the right word to say is that not the right word it's not as high impact is that fair yeah i don't i can't say i can't say that to be true all right i think it's still a very much as physical as football is i just don't think there's as much skill in rugby respectively well, I mean, I guess I play offensive line, which requires zero skill. Uh, <laughs> but I could certainly see a tight end being the case. I think yeah. um, I think that's where it kind of like... The physicality of the two sports is different. Rugby is you're not wearing pads. So the, each hit is going to hurt a little bit more. You see those guys bang. Like you see them bleeding all the time. All the time. Like they're bleeding. They're bandaged up. It looks gnarly. Their fingers are torn up. Dang, their ears up? I, are cut up. I want to go watch a game right now. I know. Right, I, I love I watching. I fucking love watching rugby. But the NFL, like because of the pads, the collisions are just much more forceful. Yeah. But you're not. You don't see as much of the uh, typically gruesome features that you'll see in rugby. And I gotta say, I do think of the two. I mean, you're gonna be hard pressed to tell me the rugby players are not tougher. Ah. Who is tougher? NFL conventional <laughs> metrics. I'm probably going rug. Dude, rugby's Yo, those you're dudes not are like tough pads, dudes. dude. They don't you're wear pads, and pads. then they're going out and they're drinking. Just not a lot of. But I will say this: not a lot of them are 300 I pounds. Down with that. Not a lot of them are. You know what I mean? It's just a different level. Would you rather get punched in the face ten times, or would you rather like a Nissan sedan run you over once? That's kind of the, the different levels of. The physicality, You're have to I feel explain like. that one, Big Cat. <laughs> and which one's which? Who's rugby so, is like you're, you're getting is your... punched in the face ten times. You don't have pads on. Somebody's going to punch you physically. It's going to hurt. It's going to and it's going to be brutal. You got to be a tough guy to take a hit, right? Yeah. Uh huh. The Nissan sedan. You're going to wear pads, but it's going to run you over, and then that's like a football collision. Yeah. I will say this. People ask me all the time. It's like, what? Do the all the hits hurt? And it's just like, well, just, you know, those, uh, the birds, the scooters that you get downtown. Yeah. Those things probably, I mean, they go anywhere from like 15 to 20 miles per hour. You can get some of them up probably even faster than that. But imagine just like taking that into the park and just going across the park and, and then just like getting it up to like 17 miles per hour and then just having somebody clothesline you, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's football essentially. When they've done the impact studies, they compare it to car collisions, car impacts. Yeah. So maybe a Nissan's not fair, but either way. Um, either way, not questioning the toughness and uh, how physically demanding rugby is. That'd be another good, could football players play rugby? There's probably a lot of guys in the NFL that will not sign up for that gig. No, definitely not. But the Kelsey boys will. I, I'd, I'd for sure do it. I'd I think that might be like a, fun. a fucking blast. Yeah. yeah. I'd flank like a motherfucker. We'd have to get some tips from Ed Kelsey. I'd be the one like drop kicking it and running to go get it. Yeah, that's a good move. Solid move. I lateraled it last week. I mean, we already know about my quarterback sneak skills. We'd be a, we'd be scrumming it up. Scrumming it up. Not right now. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a rugby player one of these days become yeah. an NFL superstar like uh, Jordan Blonda did. Yeah. All right. At meme underscore K24. Not right now. Childhood no dumb question. Love childhood, no dumb questions. Um, yep. Did you go to Cedar Point as young kids? Any funny oh, memories yeah. from the trips there? And uh, who threw up first? Well, uh, yeah, we did go to Cedar Point a lot. Just about once or twice a year. We also went to Joggle Lake, 
before it became Six Flags. Joggle Lake. I heard Joggle Lake might be coming back. Joggle Lake's coming back? I heard it might be coming back. Ooh. What was the best ride at Joggle Lake? Joggle Lake? It's yeah. just a water park. I didn't really go on in much of the rides from well, what I remember. Big Dipper, bro. Big Dipper. I, but then again, remember as a kid, I was one? just about to mention this when you when you brought up Cedar Point. Yeah. Well, I, I guess we shouldn't talk about Joggle Lake because this person asked about Cedar Point. Yeah. But, um, Shout out to Joggle Lake. I, like a lot of my friends, <laughs> a lot of my friends worked at Joggle Lake uh, yeah. when we were in like middle school and early years of high school, I believe. But, but we did go to Cedar Point a lot. I guess so for those of you that don't know, oh yeah, we gotta we gotta lay lay lay, lay the law. Cedar Point is Roller Coaster USA. It the is best the the premier park. roller coaster amusement park in the country. Well, the at least it was. I think in it's the still, world. In the, in the world. world, you can't right. tell me it's not in the I world. Mean, it had five or six uh, world record breaking roller coasters. Yeah, it just kept breaking them for a number of years. That was like our deal. And now there's like. King Da broke theirs, and it's the same ride as the Dragster, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. They took the Dragster down, I think. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Don't want to. Yeah. Well, that thing would go up. It would go to the highest point. Any stuck. roller coaster gets stuck, and then it would come right back down, and you go down backwards uh, yeah. the way you just went up it. So it's, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get why they, uh, they took that thing down. But it was the scariest thing I've ever been on in my life. <sighs> the Dragster, was it the scariest? The Dragster. I still, I still think... What's scarier, that or like the the one that you go all the way up to the top and you just plummet immediately? <laughs> yeah, I don't like that one. And I never had the balls. The one that just up and down the whole time? Yes. I never had the balls to get on the one where it's just like a bungee cord attached to like a steel cage and they just launch <laughs> you like a slingshot. I don't know who's motivated <laughs> enough. I can get on some rides now, but that is one that I firmly am like, no interest in doing that one. Like zero. We might need to just throw some GoPros on and and go visit Cedar Point just one time. Well, I'll go to Cedar Point, but I'm not going on that slingshot ride. I'm not doing it. Come on. No. Live a little. That that is the kid. As a kid, I didn't go on any of them. It took me until I got to college and then after college that when I went back to Cedar Point, I could finally go on the Millennium Force and the Dragster and all these all these rides. I will go on record. The best ride still at Cedar Point is Millennium Force. It's not even close. Millennium Forces, that was such a well-made ride. Electric. The problem with the dragster was it was it's over in like it's not it was like over in twenty five seconds. Like you're done. The whole thing so you waited in a line for six hours for twenty five seconds. You go and like then you know two hundred some miles an hour, which is pretty fucking sweet. Yeah, I mean that's dope, but Yeah, I'm with you. But I think uh Millennium is over an hour if I'm not mistaken. Or over a minute, if I'm not mistaken. I was about to say for an hour, are you can be too much. No, it was one hundred percent the best. So my favorite is actually uh, is Millennium Force, but Raptor was uh my favorite growing up. You're just like the f- feet and then dangling, Prey Man is- feet dangling. No, the Prey Man is the one where you stand up on it. Yeah, but that one's there too, right? Yeah, yeah. The Raptor was um, the best though. Feet dangling, doing all the loops. It's the first ride. As soon as you walk into the left, gosh, I remember that thing. I remember the and tallest the Magnum, ride they made. The Magnum was, was say, so the, the original Magnum was the first ride. original. Like, it was, hey, it's fucking wooden. No, Magnum is not wooden. I thought it was wooden. I think nope. it might be wooden, dude. It's not. It's definitely. It's red. It's metal and it's red. No, just the cart's red. The Magnum is not wooden. I promise you. That'd be nuts if it was wooden. It's not wooden. I don't need to even look at a picture. But that was the first one they built that was the tallest in the world. Then they one-upped it in the year 2000 when they made Millennium Force. And that was and still is my favorite ride there. And then the Dragster. Yeah. And they broke their own record three times in a row. They had a water park as well. A pretty gnarly one. I think that was the first wave pool I had ever been in. No, no, no. Your first wave pool was Typhoon Lagoon, dog. I was there for that one. Jug Lake? Walt Disney World. Typhoon, Typhoon Lagoon. Typhoon Lagoon. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do I forget a name like that? What made you remember <laughs> that one? It was my first time going in a wave pool. <laughs> Either I was a I was just so small and of a human that the waves just looked way bigger, but I don't think they like, were I even, a wave we were pool. body surfing. I'm telling you, <laughs> Typhoon Lagoon a had a bigger not, one. I've looked at their most recent ones, and they're not as big. Like there was like the further you went out, it, it got like you're risking your life. The younger you are, for sure. It's like that kid's way too young to be out there. He's gonna die. But as with any amusement park, the best thing about any amusement park is not the rides. It's the dip and dots. 
It's Ooh. the ice cream of the future. That has been the ice cream of the future now for 40 years and has never made it outside <laughs> of amusement parks. But somehow it is still delicious every time you go. Dude, those in the elephant ears, man. I don't remember the elephant ears. White powder over the uh, fried... Uh, it's like your... It's like a funnel cake? Yeah, funnel cake. I don't know why I call it an elephant ear. Is that a thing? I think so. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, those are delicious too. Yeah, you can't... I mean, but those are at every carnival. Where have you ever seen Dippin' Dots? I mean, I guess sporting events, I've seen some Dippin' Dots. I've seen him at uh, Pat Mahomes' garage. He's got a garage. Shut up. He's got a freezer of Dippin' Dots. Pat Mahomes has a freezer of Dippin' Dots? What is he, Richie Rich? Pat Mahomes. He's just got a like, random, like, does he have a roller coaster in his backyard, too? No, he's got a par three, but uh, I don't think yeah. Got to get a roller coaster, Pat. Did dad or mom tell the story about you uh, getting lost? Uh, that wasn't an amusement park. That was at the county fair, I think, maybe, or a carnival. They, but yes. They did tell I don't that think, story. Well, I don't know if they told that story or not. Either way, we got a bunch of new listeners. Tell it again. Who cares? When we did go on road trips as kids. Oh, that one. I thought you were talking about the one that was at the- At the- You got, lost, got lost at an amusement park? Well, oh, that yeah. Was, that was me, and that's why I was- We, we both got lost at them, because I definitely got lost at one of those. Yeah. Mom would always tell us where to meet up. Immediately if we ever got lost. you walk in. Hey, if we get lost, we're coming back to the clock. Statue. Yeah. Right there. there. Yeah. There's always something in the beginning. She eventually got pissed up and sick of us getting lost, and she put me in a, a backpack? Leash. Yeah. Oh, I had, I had you, the leash. you did the international I was a leash kid. symbol yeah. for backpack. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, that's what it was. It was a harness. You put it around your shoulders, you'd connect it twice. So and you were like... I was a leash kid. Wow. Just dragging my parents across the entire amusement <laughs> park. I don't remember that. I missed out on the leash. Oh, man. God, let right. me go! Sorry. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our last No Dumb Question. Uh, shout out to everybody in Ohio or anybody that's gone to Cedar Point. Jason, I think we do need to do the GoPros and uh, and show everybody how amazing that place is. I'll do that. How about you grow a pair of fucking nuts and go on the jungle? The the jump. What is it? Slingshot the, uh, thing. Yeah, the slingshot thing. I don't know what it's called, but Gosh, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And no, I'm not. And it's nothing to do with ball. I think it's stupid. I'm not going on it. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. I've ever. Moving on to the next no dumb question. What is the mo- oh, uh, from at. It's Megan Query. What is the most confusing or infuriating penalty to get during a game? At this point, the way the game is going, um, it's a penalty like a uh, roughing the passer that isn't roughing the passer. Oh, that's spot on. I don't know why it just it just makes me cringe. I love it when you know we get it, you know. But sure, yeah, when it helps out, you're not it's yeah. you're not that infuriating. But it makes me but, feel like I'm getting away with something if Pat doesn't get like yeah. fucking. Helmet to helmet yeah, or something. He was you asking I mean? for one in the game, which was not a ref in the passer. It was close. It was not. It was ridiculous that he was even asking for it. it was close. The guy was aiming for his head. He, bro, we're not getting into this. I said it in my head. I was like, Pat, you're running again that call. But I'm with you. When in doubt, I'm with you. I'm <laughs> hey, fucking same with team. you. Ref, you got to throw same that, team. man. You got to throw that. Yeah, right. <laughs> How, you just going to let that guy get away with that? It's definitely not a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the perfect answer. I don't think we need to even bring up another one. I think that's no. It's uh, maybe like a like a phantom. Any type of phantom flag is 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 hard to deal with in the moment when an official gets it uh, wrong. But for some reason, the 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 roughing the passer ones feel like they're so forced that it's 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 definitely become a bigger issue. I feel like when those have been getting called. So I'm with you on that. Yeah, you just feel it. And to our last one. Yeah, last no dumb question from Eva at Barcelona Baby Twelve. That's Barcelona Baby. All right. Yeah. Okay. And okay. She baby. Lives in Barcelona and was born in twenty twelve. No dumb questions. My friend wants to know if intern Brandon, my friend, wants okay. to know if intern Brandon is single because she thinks he is very cute. At New Heights Show, at T. Kelsey, at J. Kelsey. Okay, Eva. Well, you know what? Eva, we think he's pretty cute, too. So he's so cute that we decided to bring him on the show to answer this no dumb question. Intern Brandon. Uh Uh-huh. And everyone knows Barcelona, baby. (laughs) That's a bullshit question. My friend wants to know really means you want to know. Exactly. Yeah. How does it know? No, it's that a fair question. It is that, a fair that, question. That someone in Barcelona is attracted Me? to intern Brandon. How does that make I don't, you feel? I 
don't love it. I'm going to be honest with you. Don't love the attention. This is not my show. Don't know. I'm here to what? I'm here to make prize picks. I'm here to oh, cash out on prize picks. Don't get out there for a second. Brandon, Everybody you're every part of this show. I'm what? No, it's weird. I don't like seeing my name out there. I'm not buying that. <laughs> you're you're New Heights most wanted. You're like Malibu's most wanted, but New Heights most wanted. Jake's the cutie. If we had to, if we had to rank the cute boys of New Heights, Jake's number one. <laughs> But B Rand, B Rand sounds. B Rand, yeah, that's the grew up. I grew up being called B Rand. That was the definitely the nickname. Barcelona <laughs> baby to answer to answer your friend's don't be uh, question. No, I am unfortunately not single. I am sorry. I am sorry. That's uh, our viewership is plummeting right now because they're all tuned in for me. Wait, why are you sorry? Sorry to inform. No, you sorry to inform Eva that her that dreams I are now ruined. Not, not yeah. Single. Oh, but to be honest, there could be an update on that very soon. Um. This past weekend, my girlfriend and I were watching a little program called Saturday Night Live. A young man by the name of Travis Kelsey jumped up there. And uh, for a lot of people who don't know, I was lucky enough I've to... heard that. <laughs> I ain't no young America's man. I'm sweetheart a man. Travis Kelsey. <laughs> oh, sorry. And I love, people don't know this, but I was lucky enough to weasel my way backstage when Travis, you hosted, and it was time of my life. I got to bring my girlfriend. And we were sitting there, and I said, oh, my God, can you can you believe that, like, we got to do this to Travis. It's crazy that like, we were we were there at SNL with him, and she did not acknowledge my question. She kept staring dead on forward, and she goes, "Do you remember he hugged me?" And I went, "God damn it!" <laughs> A whole night of, of sketches and after parties Stop. and going home she at six thirty in the morning, and, she was, and the hug is the first thing she brought up. <laughs> so. So I'll let you know, Eva. He's, he's a mesmerizing face. And my, he just, I knew she was. I knew she was with you. So I wanted to make her feel the love of New Heights. So I gave her a good hug. No, I listen. The hug is not an issue. The hug is not an issue. It's that that's the first memory of the evening. Is Travis hugged me. <laughs> so Brandon, it's not what you think it is. Travis is just a really good hugger. Trust me. We. It's a very known Kelsey genetic. He's a hugger. He's a door opener. He's a fucking hand holder. He crushed it. <laughs> I have seen so many just. He's a creative character in uh, boyfriend material. <laughs> <laughs> so much footage breaking down Travis Kelsey's hand holding. And I'm like, every attribute we could give him. <laughs> guys, that's three points of contact. That is not, that's football. That's not hand at all. Oh, that's gosh. Yeah, they, uh, they caught me with some weird uh, hand holding. Uh, poses there that was crazy <laughs> we'll move on move on, move on move on we're not hey that's not that's not what this show is about this show is not about that sorry eva all right guys well, well played Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. well played thank you for ruining uh eva's friends sorry. from barcelona's sorry. uh no dumb question thank you for always making this show amazing can uh bye are we talking, yeah, to, eva? Are we talking to eva here or are we talking to brandon you can all right, disappear. See you later. <laughs> all right. We'll see your cute ass later, big guy. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. That was No Dumb Questions brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go, sports bar. Before we keep going, we need to shout out our sponsor, Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. Prize Picks is the most fun way to win money. This football season, uh, you just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the daily fantasy sports app numero uno. All right, now. And uh, now for this portion of the ad read, we labeled uh, this one personal experience to be read by talent outside of me and Jason because we're active NFL players and cannot participate. But you know who can? Our cute-ass intern, Brandon. Brandon, oh, come on down. Come on in here, cutie. Oh, my God. I how, was your, uh, how was your weekend? <laughs> how was your weekend? My weekend with prize picks? I actually feel gross. I have to admit something, and I feel bad about it. I did good. I did it by placing some real money on the Cowboys. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Why would you tell me that? I don't know. I, I don't like, need to know this This is a place of honesty. This is a place of truth and honesty, and I feel like I tell you everything. So I'm sorry. I won't do it again. They were playing the Chargers, so I'm not mad at you. But. Thank you. That's right, Travis. I'll beat it. There we I'll go, beat it. All right, two Enjoy quick it. picks and get out of here. All right, folks. This week, my picks, I'm going to go with A.J. Brown for receiving yards. I'm going to stay on that hype train. And I'm going to go with Isaiah Pacheco for rushing yards. I'm going back to kiss ass by picking Chiefs and Eagles players. But 
you can pick anything you want in prize picks. They got passing yards, uh, rushing yards, touchdown, rushing, passing, TD combos, INTs, field goals. Take a look at the app. Have a field day. I'm going to get the guys back on. This is the part where I wave. Let's get them back. Travis! Travis! We are legally in the clear. Goodbye. Perfect. All right. Beat it. Hopefully our intern did you guys right. And if you want to get into daily fantasy this season, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights and use the code new heights for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. How about that? That's prizepicks.com slash new heights code new heights for daily fantasy sports made easy. All right. Shout out to another one of our sponsors, state farm. That's right. State Farm helps you score an affordable price when you bundle home and auto insurance with their personal price plan. The personal price plan lets you call the plays so you can choose the home and auto insurance coverage that fits your needs at a price that you can afford. And who doesn't love to call plays? And bundling home and auto, that's a pro move. And another way to save with the State Farm personal price plan. So talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm's there. Mm. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings and eligibility vary by state. Jason, let's keep this thing rolling, baby. All righty. Let's get to these bold topics. Chiefs, 19, Broncos, 8. Yeah, initial thoughts from the first divisional matchup for you guys this year. What do you got, Trev? Kind of along the lines of what you said last week, you got to put up touchdowns, man. You got to put up tutties when you're in the red zone. Got to. And on top of that, our defense is still playing their tail off and uh, making uh, our team look really good. We just have to find ways to freaking score touchdowns, man. And it, like you, I mean, it's just frustrating. And it's uh, it's hard because it's like, you want to be the reason why we're doing great. And right now, it's uh, it's kind of up and down. It's not great. Coach Nagy, Matt Nagy, our OC. Nags. One of my favorite guys. He uh, he challenged all of us uh, this morning, actually, to, you know, stop saying we're going to fix it and go out there and do it and and uh, and do it and having some fun, man. We got a lot of good good personalities and a lot of great players on this team, especially on the offensive side. We just got to find, find the groove and find the rhythm. And sure enough, we're doing it, finding finding ways to win, but it's uh, it's not helping out our defense as much as we would love to. So, but that's the biggest thing for me is just being able to score touchdowns and not not making it harder on our defense, man. Well, you guys may be being tough on yourselves, but it is your fifth straight win. The final score of nineteen to eight has only happened one time before. Nice little LeBron stat in nineteen twenty seven. That is, that's a wild stat, yeah. The Chiefs have now won 16 straight games against the Broncos, which is the longest active winning streak versus one team in the NFL. The Eagles and Jets had a nice one there for a little bit, but that, uh, spoiler alert, that didn't go well. Defense played lights out. You guys had another incredible game on defense. Held the Broncos with just eight points, shut them out through the three and a half quarters of the game. Finished with two INTs, four sacks, and a fumble recovery. Stone Cold Jones kept his stack streak alive as we all saw that happen with five and a half sacks this season. Yeah, the Chiefs defense is only allowing 284 yards per game and 12.8 points per game. Yeah. The fewest points per game allowed by the Chiefs defense or a Chiefs team since 1969. Damn. Baldy himself is calling the Chiefs D the most complete defense in the NFL. Um, do you think this is the most complete defense you have played with? I mean, it sure seems to be. I mean, I, I don't know if uh, if I've been a part of a Spags defense just. You've been on some good defenses now. Yeah. Early on in my career, that was the that was what we did. You know, was defense and Coach Reed found ways to get Jamal the ball, hand that thing off to Jamal Charles, and really use him as a wide receiver as just an offensive weapon. And our defense was star studded with guys like Justin Houston, Eric Berry, Derek Johnson, Dontari Poe, Dontari Poe, Tomba Ali. Like mm -hmm. we, we Brandon Flowers. We had some dogs. Yeah, you did. Shout out to Sean Smith. Looking at that defense, a lot more star-studded, familiar names. I was about to say the same thing. The, the star-studdedness, probably and greater I back then. Justin but, Houston had like 20 sacks yeah. one of those years. Well, yeah, like, Chris no, Jones He's doing pretty good. Whether it's one of them or the best, um, right now it's it's so much fun to play with that defense because they just they get it. You know, they're, they're flying around. They're having fun. Uh, it's definitely a team effort. Guys are rallying to the ball. 
Um, and Spags is one of the most motivating guys that that I feel like there is in the NFL. I mean, it was we were at halftime, um, and Spags is he's acting like he's not satisfied at all. Like we got, wow. they're getting too many yards on on in the ground, you know, things like that. And it's just yeah. you know, we're, we we got to we got to rally to the ball, you know. When we hit him, we got to hit him harder. You know what? He's just – he was kind of firing me up even more, and I'm like – I'm about to start screaming at everybody on the offense, but it's not, it's not like we're we're losing the game or anything. So it's uh, it's just – it's fun to play with guys that are just motivated to be their absolute best and never getting satisfied with And I think that's one thing that Coach Spags does um, better than a lot of coaches in the NFL, and that's motivate guys to never be, uh, you know – satisfied or complacent at all with uh, what's what's going on not only is spags a great um motivator but schematically he he mixes it up as as well as anybody does and i feel like in order to mix it up truly and and, and try and come with all these different types of blitzes or different types of coverages you have to be not only good in the back end but smart smart you gotta be intelligent man and it feels like the your guy's back end right now the, the defensive secondary, it is dialed in, brother. Like, not I mean, the linebacker, yeah, they're good across the board. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a weakness in the defense, but the, the secondary, I feel like when that thing is clicking, it is so fun to watch because they fly around. Dude. They're all over the field. All over and, the field. Um, you know, the, freaking Justin Reed's out there making plays left and right. It's, it's fun to watch right now. Jay Reed's killing it. Duffy's killing it. I mean, everybody's absolutely killing it. I think a great addition was Mike Edwards. Um, when the ball's in the air, he's a ball hawk in safety and he's always yeah. flying around. And then, you know, you just you just love to see the young guys, you know. Cincinnati's own Brian Cook is out there being an absolute menace. Yeah, baby. Getting in the run game when he finds ways to get around the ball. Um, he's had a few opportunities for some turnovers and uh, got a few already for us this year. When you get everybody, like you said, on the same page yeah. and then you get guys just freaking playing with confidence. Yep. It's, a, it's tough to beat. It's a good man. recipe. It's tough to beat. Well, the offense uh, was certainly doing their thing a little bit, even though you guys struggled in the red zone. You did not struggle to move the football, um, and including a big game for the Big Yeti. Ooh, the Yeti, Yeti. How about that, Trav? 124 yards receiving. It felt like it was going to be a big day right from the get-go. You had like maybe the first two or three catches or something like that. Like, it was right away. I mean, you were getting peppered with the ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, you had 109 of those yards came in the first half uh, on seven receptions. Yeah. Second time in your career that you recorded 100-plus uh, yards receiving in the first half of a game. You've only done Gosh. that twice? I got to have a better second half. That's all that says. <laughs> That's all that's telling me. I got to fucking play better. I got to finish the game like I started. It, it felt like you were in for a career day early. I was like, man, this – they ain't covering Trav. This is this is gonna be a big day for my man. Feed me, Seymour. Feed me. <laughs> I was looking at Pat like I'm open all the time. Let's go, let's go. But the thing we absolutely have to talk about from this game was your lateral to uh, Noah Gray just on smooth, the Chiefs' just... first drive. Which yep. what was everybody thinking when Andy Reid called in a lateral play in the first drive? I've been screaming. Um, we need to put a hook and lateral play in and coach Reed is just like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> As is every coach in the NFL. <laughs> it's like that play works in college and has never worked in the NFL, maybe once or twice in the NFL. And everybody's just ready for it at this point. Okay. So I took it upon myself <laughs> to just prove that, you, that it, <laughs> it can works. Work. It's destiny. Coach Reed, it's destiny. If you look at the play, I, I, came off the ball and immediately turned around because there was a blitzer and I thought Pat was just going to dot me with the ball while guys were sinking while the defense about the, everybody in the back end was sinking with uh, all our speedsters. And um, I guess, I mean, Pat's being a quarterback, got a lot of shit he's doing back there. He's going through his progression and he finally finds me, dots me with the ball, but I was short on my route because of how quick I turned around. So I was actually in Noah Gray's area of where he would have been getting the ball. Yeah. Kind of felt a little guilty about, man, may, might have stole a catch from him, but I uh, I made sure I uh, I got that thing to him. <laughs> so you, you repaid it, the it favor. It felt weird. It's like, oh man, I just stole his catch and then i was just go. like oh Bam. this works out perfectly everybody's collapsing on me they got me but they don't got you <laughs> and we got the first down 
sometimes it goes for 20. Sometimes, you know, I throw the ball on the ground and it becomes a fumble and we got to recover it. And then sometimes you just get a first down. You keep the chains moving, man. Shout out to Noah Gray for being ready for that one, baby. He said he knew Noah it was said, coming. He you, said, you do it a lot in practice because, like, <laughs> he knew it was going to happen. I do it a lot in practice and then walkthroughs. I feel like it's it. so much fun doing that. Yeah. You got to test the waters, man, just to see what it looks like, you know. I want to make sure make sure guys are paying attention. That too. You know what I mean? Everybody's yeah. finishing. Hey, Everybody's finishing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing that isn't clicking right now for the Chiefs offense in this game was the red zone. Uh, you guys put together a great game. A lot of yards. Got the W, but yeah, struggled to get the ball in the end zone. A lot of, uh, lot of Bucker. Harry. 61, the 61 or 62 yarder. I forget which one it was, but he had about an extra 15 yards on that thing. Yeah, he's he's got a good leg. That thing went through like the middle of the goalposts. Like he had an extra like 15 yards. He could have gone back. And I'm like, damn, if he hits a 70 yarder. Let's test it out. If he hits a 70 yarder for the game, for the win. That's some like Justin Tucker stuff. That's how you get Goldberg speared of excitement <laughs> from your teammates. You know what I mean? Just like, what? No way! <laughs> you guys were one for five in the red zone, and Pat was asked after the game, and Mahomes was quoted as saying this, lucky for us, our defense has been playing great, so we can go through these growing pains and try to get better and better. The talent's there. You can see it in spurts, but we have to learn how to sustain drives, get down into the red zone, and score touchdowns, and make it easier for our defense uh, to play free. Yeah, I mean, that sums it up. Pat gets it. I um, I think we all get it. And that's why I, I'd mentioned Coach Nagy saying it. It's like, yeah, we, we understand it. We feel how unstoppable we can be. And we just got to do it for uh, for four quarters, man. And the biggest thing is, is just, you know, go out there and it doesn't matter, you know, what the defense is presenting, which play is called for us. Go out there and make a play. Make it happen. You know, I think that's the, one of the most special things about Pat uh, being, you know, Magic Mahomes. Doesn't yeah. matter if, uh, you know, what the defense is in, what they got going on. If they're just either they're blitzing everybody or they're making everyone sink into the into the red zone and making you dink and dunk underneath. Playing with Pat means anything's possible. And we just got to make sure that we get that ball in the fucking end zone, man. And uh, that's the bottom line. <laughs> and that's how that's how we're going to move move forward going going through the uh, the red zone, man. Well, one of the things that stopped you up short in the red zone was a fourth and two play, uh, which was a very Philadelphia Eagle-like, where you guys decided to go with the brotherly shove only Pop. from a fake field goal formation. I don't think anybody saw this play coming, but um, it didn't work out. <sighs> yeah, man. Um, and the thing is, I, I, I always look at situations like this, like where where could I have done better on that driver on those last three plays before it was fourth and two? You know what I mean? And I caught a pass that was literally right around the sticks. And if I make a move or if I, you know what I mean? If I do something and get those extra yards or even get one extra yard, you know what I mean? That, that fourth and two becomes fourth and one. And now that sneak is the percentages go way higher than 92%. All right now. Hey, all right. You know, I think that it's a great call because legally you're not allowed to line up over the center um, during a field goal. Yeah. But once you go under center, you can. Rules off. Um, so you try and catch them off guard of having nobody over the center and being able to get that push. So that's what, so when I was sense. watching it's, it, it's, that's what I thought initially was like, oh, that's why they did this. Yeah. Was 100%. because they it's thought smart. they were going to be able to catch them not in the A-gaps. Like they yeah. were going to have to be over the guards. One of the ways that that play is open is if nobody's in an A-gap. So credit to the Broncos. They reacted well to it. Everybody can make it like, oh, it, it looks so stupid when it doesn't work. But the Broncos adjusted well. I don't know that every team in the NFL is going to be expecting a shift to a direct snap quarterback sneak or is even practicing that. Yeah. So, you know, I think obviously in hindsight – doesn't look the best, but I think we're probably underselling the reaction that the Broncos special teams had to the play live in action. I think that was actually a really good adjustment on their end uh, that made it more difficult to run the play. But do you have any other final thoughts you want to share from uh, a little Thursday Night Football? How are you feeling after Thursday Night Football? Is it, is it, are you still a Thursday Night Football fan? Still a Thursday Night Football fan. It gave Gosh. me gave me a little bit of a challenge uh, coming off that ankle injury the week before, but sure. 
sometimes you just got to gut another one out, man. And uh, I knew when I turned this ankle that I was going to be dealing with it for a few extra weeks. So this is a situation that that's at hand and I just got to keep working through it and keep trusting everybody in the uh, training room and uh, what I'm, what my methods are off the field and and my recovery, you know, uh, protocols that I take, it'll slowly get better as long as I don't tweak it. And if I keep tweaking it, then you'll see me with a (laughs) wrapped ankle all year. Sometimes that's how it goes. No, I don't have any other final thoughts, man. I got a lot of respect for the Broncos. Uh, got yeah. even more respect after that game. I've seen them fight the way they did. And um, those division games, man, they're never easy. And we got another one coming up this week. No doubt. LeBron stat of the game. Travis Kelsey caught seven of his nine receptions on hitch routes. Um, tied for the most receptions on hitches in a game since 2018. Man, we really got a... I don't even know if that's necessary to share. All right. Um, <laughs> Papa Kelsey in the spotlight. If you watch Thursday Night Football, uh, first of all, they got it going on. Amazon Prime's doing a good job with that broadcast. No, I'm loving it. You already know. Well, Al Michaels, Kirk Herbstreet, they're doing a fantastic job. Absolutely killing it. If you were watching the game, you saw something uh, momentous happen. Momentous. Which was Taylor Swift talking to uh, Ed Kelsey. Yeah, Taylor talking to Dad. You already know. You know Dad. Like, I know dad. Which is, he shouldn't be talking to Taylor Swift. This is a terrifying (laughs) conversation. I felt terrible. I felt terrible for uh, Taylor for being in this. Talking to mom. um, All right. That's, you know. That's going to be it's fine. delightful. Man. It's going to be a, a wonderful you see, conversation. If you see dad talking to anybody and you can't hear what's happening, who knows where that conversation's <laughs> we going. Can't, <laughs> we can't keep kicking dad just because we enjoy doing it, man. Our dad is the yeah. best fucking dad in the world. He, he is. is. He is. He is a great uh, converser or a conversator. I'm telling you. However you want to, however you want to put it. He it's doesn't where always. Jason, it's where Jason gets his storytelling <laughs> and a lot of his uh, charisma, man. Yeah. We're saying this just because we love to rag on the big guy. For sure. And it's actually, but it was nice because, you know, mom has been getting quite a bit of the spotlight. So it was cool to see dad up there on the Jumbotron for a little bit or on the TV for a little bit. You can just see in this picture, all he's doing is just absolutely pumping her up. He started listening to her music a little more. He started doing some stuff. <laughs> just like dad, we dad. Bless his heart. <laughs> what is he saying? He's definitely... He said, "Now I've I've, I've uh, taken Has all he of your stolen her music <laughs> yeah. from the so library. Say, he, he's probably saying, I have t- I've taken all of your CDs out at the local <laughs> library, and I've started to uh, <laughs> burn, burn them, them into my uh, computer because that is legal as a tax paying citizen." <laughs> Ninety two percenters enjoyed seeing Dad sitting uh, next to Taylor as much as we did, and we got a bunch of comments. <laughs> nice user Crudo Uso. On the New Heights Reddit page, uh, posted screenshots of Taylor and Papa Kelsey and the broadcast team and wrote, what are they talking about? And the responses did not disappoint. Uh, Different Sleep 5810 wrote, uh, see, they used to call me diapers because. (laughs) Which. I, if if they were talking about that, I would still <laughs> love an explanation on that. We have still been, haven't gotten still haven't gotten that still one. Still haven't now. gotten that one. Jimmy Jack eighty seven wrote a uh, proper nut kicking technique, which you know he he will give a good tutorial on that. He will give a good tutorial. Uh, man, when I was punching people in the uh, did I already tell the story when I was punching people uh, in uh, training camp? Training camp became <laughs> a big deal. I got a text from dad. He said, "Stop." Throwing fists. You need those to catch. Just kick him in the nuts one time. I probably just stop. They'll stop doing everything. I'm like, God, Some things never change. All right. And the next response from Tech System wrote, uh, talking about his new knees, of course. Ooh, new knees. Yeah, baby. She's got him dancing to those with, with those new knees now. <laughs> Either way, are, it looks like they're golden. having a good time. That was awesome to see. So, Thank you for the 92 percenters. And thanks, Dad, for... Not making me look bad, brother. (laughs) Our next partner is AG1. That's right. The daily foundational nutrition supplement that helps give me the energy and nutrition to power through workouts and get through the grind of an NFL season. You might not believe this, but I actually take AG1 every day. No, I believe you take it every day. I really do. But right. I'm not in on why. Like, why do you take it? Well, I take it every day because as an NFL player, a father of three, a documentary uh, filmmaker, a cow farmer, uh, I got a lot going on. And uh, taking AG1 gives me peace of mind that I'm getting comprehensive nutrients to support my whole body health. 
And AG1 is NSF certified for sports, meaning it's safe to take for professional athletes like ourselves, Olympians like ourselves, ourselves. (laughs) or just high performers. Every batch of AG1 is third-party tested for over 790 contaminants so that you feel confident knowing what's on the label is in every scoop. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with uh, just your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. 92 percenters. We have some great news. Buffalo Wild Wings is rolling out a new limited time only sauce for just for football season. You're never going to guess what it is. Jason, give it a try. Is it bourbon barbecue? How the, well, how'd you know? I know everything there is to know about B-dubs, Travis. And uh, But for the 92 percenters out there that don't know, um, bourbon barbecue sauce is now on the menu at B-dubs. It is rich and complex uh, with barbecue flavor infused with Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. All right, now. After all, everyone knows the only thing better than sipping bourbon is chewing it at B-dubs. That's right. So uh, head out. <laughs> Head out to your local B-dubs and try the bourbon barbecue or order the bourbon barbecue wings at buffalowildwings.com this football season. And remember, 92 percenters, bourbon barbecue is only sticking around for a limited time while supplies last. So give it a try while you still can. Do it right now. You won't. Let's move on to the Jets versus the Eagles. Unfortunately, the Eagles, man, you guys took your first loss of the year, man. Jets 20, Eagles 14. Yeah. Why don't you hit us with some initial th- first thoughts, man, or final thoughts, I should say. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, c- credit to the Jets. They played, especially their defense played unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we knew going in they were a good defense, even though they were missing their two corners. Sauce Gardner couldn't play. Uh, read out as well. It was, uh, I mean, this is just a team that has played well against any, everybody they've played against. Um and I, we knew it was going to be a tough task coming into it. Just didn't get it done. Too many mistakes, too many turnovers. We talked about it beforehand in the uh, kind of uh, the look ahead video that we do at the end of every week. Now, uh, you know, this is not a team that you can make mistakes against nope. and still expect uh, to win the game. And it ended up killing us. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think uh, a good coach team is uh, going to find a way to stay in a football game. Yeah. Uh, till the fourth quarter, man. And I, uh, I think their, their head coach is, uh, he's got to figure it out, man. But I did make it to the game. I did make it to the you game did. with you saying that, uh, you're going to retire every year for the past five years. I've tried to make it to every game that I could possibly make it to. Well, that's just my strategy, just to make sure that you come to the games. <laughs> it's a good fucking strategy. Hey, it's worth That's your strategy the entire time, cack second. When they showed me on the broadcast, this is, I did, first of all, Eagles jerseys were out in the in the stadium, and yeah. the sixty twos are everywhere, everywhere right now. Right. And I absolutely loved it. The graphic uh, when they showed me um, describes me as Jason's brother. Really, Jason's brother. Yep. Oh wow, I get Travis's brother all the time. I did not know you were getting Jason's brother. Yeah, man. I'm just look uh, at that. I'll, I'll never be Jason Kelsey, and I get reminded of it all the time. And it just <laughs> makes me feel like a little boy every time. It's the best. Very fitting. Now, you already know I have my gang green on, as I as I always do whenever I'm watching you play, and I uh, got to enjoy it with some friends, and Kylie. Kylie was standing right behind me, or sitting Hey-o. right behind me. And, she uh, was. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fun all the way up until the end, unfortunately. Yeah. Not a good ending. No. Um, but thanks for coming, Trev. I always love- Every uh, time. You know, we don't get to see each other's games often, so it was fun to uh, have you there. Been watching you play since I was 12 years old. One of my favorite pastimes, dude. <laughs> Jason, I know you absolutely hate talking about this, but uh, you set a major record, man. You are oh, uh, yeah. you are now number one most consecutive starts in Eagles history. 145 straight starts this past Sunday. And uh, you passed John Runyon, who played 144 games for the Eagles from 2000 to 2008. Damn! That's like the one. Uh, it's like the yeah. interview that uh, Kevin Hart and Don Cheeto did, where he's like, "How old are you now?" And he told him how old he was, and he was like, "Damn, <laughs> that's an old dog right there." I don't like talking about it because it feels like every time somebody gets close to these records or whatnot, it uh, 
Doesn't go well. They had him guy, my guy Mitchell Schwartz. Mitchell Schwartz, uh, John Dornboss, the day he tied the record for most consecutive games with, um, or most Eagles games. It was one of those. Um, he, uh, never played an Eagle snap again. So I tried Jesus. to not. Yeah. Well, he, he broke his thumb and then he, uh, ended up having, uh, like an aneurysm or something like that in his aorta, but okay. not to give his, uh, entire HIPAA information out uh, without uh, permission. But I think, um, first of all, it's an honor to play that long with an organization and certainly uh, very lucky to have played that many games straight. But I will talk about John Runyon a little bit. A lot of people don't know that John Runyon played with a broken tailbone during that stretch. And he also had a consecutive game streak from before the Eagles when he was with the Titans, I believe. So R- John still holds the record for consecutive starts. If you go from before he was a Philadelphia Eagle. Sheesh. So I just want to say like, you know, very happy with uh, how many games I've played, but that's good company. John's the true iron man. I never played through something like that. And um, I can only imagine. Fuck that dude. They said he couldn't sit down on the bench. He just had to stand the entire game. What the fuck? <laughs> um, can you imagine landing on that thing? <laughs> oh my God. Jesus. Shout out to big John Runyon, man. I think he's actually the, uh, he's on the fine board now. He was, he's the head of the fine board. I forget his official title. I've had a few times where I'd had to talk to Johnny about some, uh, some things I thought I was getting heavily, heavily fined for that I didn't think was What's that? Oh, you had, you had some, uh, uh, rebuttals. You you were just talking about Stone Cold Stunner and somebody. I Stone Cold Stunnered, uh, Anthony Sherman. In the end zone one time, I, uh, I scored a touchdown against the Raiders. He came over like, yeah, Trev. And he just had, he was exposed. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> stunner. The Sherman, was probably, the Sherman was probably all for it. No, he was all for it. And he, yeah. you already know the biggest thing, if you're going to pull off a stunner, is you got to act like you get stunnered, like yeah. you got you got electrocuted. You're, yeah, you're and out. you're dead. Yeah. yeah. You got to sell it. That's half of the stunner. You got to sell it. Where is this coming back with John Runyon? Well, John, well, I got fined for it. Why would you get fined for that? Because it was, I kicked him, and it's like violence, and it's like this and that. I was just like, "Come on, man, we're playing. It's what, play. It's a, come on, it's just a wrestling move." Yeah, I'm not promoting violence. I'm promoting Stone Cold Steve Austin. Did he get rescinded? I forget. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it might have. It might have. I think John actually saw my my uh, side of the story there. I well, think for those of rescinded. you that don't know, John Runyon, longtime offensive lineman in the NFL, now works as essentially the sheriff of the NFL. His job is uh, the vice president of policy and rules um, administration, and um, he is in charge of all the fines, all the, the 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 uniform violations, everything that is to do with players uh, abiding and uh, keeping the game safe. All of that stuff falls under the guidance of John Runyon, yeah. who is coincidentally known as one of the dirtiest, toughest players ever played the game, <laughs> which is just ironic that he is now the head of that. But it's kind of like a catch me if you can type deal with uh, Leo DiCaprio. Yeah, like he, yeah. he's, he's a he's the best. Uh, Can't fool me. Uh, check forger in the world, and then all of a sudden he starts working for the good guys. Uh, and that's kind of John Runyon, right there. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good, man. Shout out to Big John Runyon, man, for uh, still uh, having his hand in the uh, in the NFL, man. Doing doing good things. Former senator. Making sure that uh, that fine money goes to five hundred one C threes. What are they? <laughs> LLCs. All right. Um, defensive battle, man. This one ended up being a battle of defenses by the end. And uh, the Eagles defense finished the game with five sacks and held the Jets offense to just, you know, one and five in the red zone. Held them to just nine points in the first half. Maintained a 14 to 12 lead until the final touch to, or yeah, until the final touchdown with a minute 46 left in the fourth quarter. What's your favorite part about playing with that defense? We get a lot of opportunities. You know, when you when you have a bad defense, you got to be clicking from the get go as an offense. You know, you can't have mistakes, and something that our defense has done an amazing job of all season, but especially this last game, is they're, they're so good that you know, even when you turn the ball over four times, you're still in the game at the end of the game, like at the end of it. Yeah, you know, all the way down to that last you know two minute drive, we had an opportunity to at least win the game. And you know, typically you turn the ball over four times, you're not. It ain't a one-score game at that point. Percentages are down. So, yeah, our, our defense has been unbelievable. The defensive line, the backfield, everybody's really humming right now. And uh, Sean Desai is those guys playing uh, as a unit. So, you know, it's it's been fun to watch. And um, I think uh, 
unfortunately, we just we couldn't do enough to capitalize on all the good good football that they were playing this past Sunday. When a defense has your back after you make a turnover and they only get three points or no points, uh, that's a, that's a big. Uh, uh, that's a big moment for everybody on the team, but the offense definitely is very appreciative. Being in the in the game that we played the Jets, um, that place was absolutely rocking. Especially later in the game when when the Jets started feeling like they they really had you know the momentum and everything. And it was rocking this Sunday. Your game was the same, man. the The longer that game went and it, and it didn't get out of hand, it kind of stayed close. Man, that place got rocking. And uh, yeah. hats off to the Jets because that's that's huge as a home team to have that kind of home field advantage and um, to get the momentum from the crowd and the, everybody rallying, man, that's uh hats off. I, I know as a, as a, as a fan of the game, I enjoy that atmosphere a lot and um, was really hoping you guys, you know, found a way in there. So shout out to Jets Jake for not being a complete bias fucking. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. Shout out to Jets Jake. All right. We're getting Jets Jake on here in a little bit. We talked about this in our bonus video, uh, our bonus preview video last week. Uh, you knew you were going to be in a fight against the uh, the Jets defense, despite A.J. Brown's big game, uh, pink shoes going out there making plays the entire time. Offense getting off to a nice start with the, the Jalen to Swift TD in the first half. The Jets held you guys to those 14 points the rest of the game, boss. Yeah. Finished the game with two sacks, three interceptions, and one fumble recovery. Uh, it sounds, I mean, the sacks, that's thats a hell of a defensive line. Um, to only to come out of there with two sacks isn't, I don't think, you know, where it is. Obviously, the, the turnovers are everything, though. Yeah, but those sacks don't, I mean, we did not do a good job, a good enough job of protecting the quarterback as a unit. It only says two sacks, but a lot of that's because of how good Jalen is. Yeah. I, we gave up too much pressure as an offensive line. Uh, it, but yeah, the, the, the turnovers are definitely what hurt us the most. They always do. That's, you know, we got to take care of the football. You know, we had turnovers, drops, and then as an offensive line, we didn't run the ball well and we didn't protect Jalen well enough. And I think, listen, these, these, they're a good defense. I'm, I'm, I'm giving them their flowers. Defensive line is great. Linebackers, I mean, running. Quincy Williams, CJ Mo, those guys are all over the field making plays. Uh, the back end, even without the two starting corners, I mean, you know, they're going to play zone. They're going to mix it up. They're going to try and make it difficult. They're, they do a good job of not leaving, uh, you know, uh, guys in bad positions or, or difficult positions. I mean, you know, Salah really knows what he's doing over there in New York. And you know, they got the, they, they had the, the better day. I mean, it, it is what it is. And, you know, for us, we always just try and focus on ourselves, man. Every time. You give credit to your opponent and they played a great game. But it's always about us. We we just refocus on, okay, what do we got to do to improve? How do we get better? What were the things that were glaringly correctable for the Philadelphia Eagles? And if we would have corrected those things, we'll be in a chance to win games moving forward. And that's that's where our headset is. That's where our mindset is. So As it should be. And just to give everybody uh, some understanding on how good this Jets defense is, specifically in the second half, which is adjustments. And that's uh, like I was talking about, uh, their – head coach and their defensive coordinator both are, you know, making great adjustments. You know, the Buffalo Bills only scored three points. Dallas has got the most points in the second half on them, and that's uh, 12, four field goals. Um, the biggest thing here is that they've allowed 31 points uh, total in second halves this year, and that's six games and only one touchdown, which yeah. is you hear us talking about the red zoning and punching that ball in the end zone um, late in the no game. Doubt. That is a huge advantage to be keeping your teams uh, to just kicking field goals. And um, yeah. yeah, it's uh hats off to the jets, man. I got faith that the boys over there, the brotherly shove, the gang green is going to f- keep figuring it out, man. Um, you guys got too many great players and, and too many great offensive minds over there to, uh, to keep stalling or to stay where you're at, I guess. It's going to keep on keeping on, brother. Kudos to them. I guess it's time. Bring him on. Why are we bringing him back on? I don't know. Because we played his team and everybody loves Jets Jake. Jet, Jets Jake, go ahead. Come on on, bud. Here he comes. Oh, hey. love the hat, Jake. Oh, the hat. Oh, I didn't really. Love the hat. Am I wearing this? I didn't Is that corduroy? <laughs> Is that corduroy? Is that a Kelly Green shirt you have on? It's a Jason Kelsey, oh my gosh, shirt. Hey, love that little New Heights merch. Yeah, I got to plug the merch. That's pretty much 
all I was saying on Sunday over and over again. So, it, you know, it felt fitting. What are your thoughts from the game, Jake? Listen, I thought I thought both teams played hard. I thought it was a well-fought game. Uh, no, I mean, I, I did not expect the Jets to win that game, and the defense played lights out, and that's how we're going to have to win games for the rest of the season. Dude, I, I'm not going to lie. There were moments in the game where I felt like I was just going to hear it from you. <laughs> like I'm like, je- like there was the uh, there was the blindside block that the whole stadium lost their mind on, which was a completely illegal block. And the Jets are all like complaining about it, like, bro. You can't crack back with your shoulder. Like that's a known rule in the NFL. Yeah, you can't go and everybody's the- booing in the whole place. There, I and think they were. Wow, the guy's hurt. He's down and hurt, and the fans are booing. It was ridiculous. But regardless of that, and then the AJ Brown catch, I'm like, I, I already know Jets Jake is going to be losing his mind that this is called a catch. But for some reason, you're not losing your mind. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're not losing your mind because you guys won the game. Mm. Maybe that's the key to not losing your mind. It's just winning football games. <laughs> Listen, I think the refs have a very hard job. I'd never come on here and complain about the refs. <laughs> this guy's uh, a psycho. Jesus. I think, you know, they have, they have a tough job. And, and when it's a Sunday, you yeah. got to do what you got to do. And things are going to go your way. And they I'll might you, not. I'll I w- tell you what. There was, a, there was a play late in the game where Devontae Smith, I believe, was the last, it was the last fourth down. And uh, Jalen gave... Devontae a good chance at making a play downfield. And, you know, I thought there was a lot of a lot of just pulling while the ball was in the air. And like there was a lot of there might have been some interference. <laughs> I don't Listen, know. What do you think about that last play? I, I think I gotta Did just you see quote it? I gotta quote Jason here and just say, let the boys play rap. You gotta just like <laughs> you know, like I think they did their job this time. Swallow the whistle. Yeah. It was a good game. I was I was wearing a rooting for offense shirt at one point and then I realized I actually wanted the Jets to win, so I took that off. <laughs> but <laughs> Thanks, thanks for letting me come talk about the Jets. Good luck for the rest of the season. Well, congratulations on your win, Jake. Uh, fuck you and get off our show now. Get the fuck out of here, Jake. <laughs> Shout out to Jets, Jake. Shout out to Jets, popping Jake. in. God damn it. Fuck that guy. Yeah. We love you. Well, post game, it was reported that after the game, Sirianni didn't say anything in the locker room and instead allowed the certain players to speak up. Can you confirm? Well, like Nick gave the floor to somebody like there were just guys talking about how that was unacceptable. That's not the standard that we're holding ourselves to, that we need to play better. Good leadership. Somehow I got roped into this, which I did not talk during this portion. I talked to guys on the team, uh, but I had not talked during this specific portion. But um, I think as is usually the case, like, you know, your teammates and the people in the room, if you got you know anybody that's worth their salt as a teammate, you know, everyone knows what happened in the game and what you got to do to improve and, yeah. I think Nick just felt like, you know, it had already been summed up. You know what I mean? He's just like, well, you guys heard him. <laughs> Let's uh, go back to work on Monday. And the expectations of ourselves and the level that we want to play at is very high. And, you know, I think offensively speaking, we've been in and out of that. There are times that we've met up to that standard and a lot of times where we have not, uh, quite frankly, been consistent enough and we've made too many mistakes. And we know that. And that was a big message. Uh, to that, and you know, we have to take accountability to to improve that and, and play at the level and uh, that we want to play at. If you want to realize what you want to in this league, so yeah, you know, defense played an outstanding game today or an outstanding game this last week, and uh, those guys are rolling right now. And if they can keep doing that, we can fix some of this stuff on offense. We have we have a really really good team, and yeah, I think that that's that's the biggest stuff. You know, it's preaching. Let's take some accountability here, and that always. I think means a little bit more when your teammates are the ones it's preaching coming from the team. Yeah, one hundred percent. I know it sucks to lose. Fuck, we've all been there. Yeah, let's not burn the ships, boys. All right, we still got the best <laughs> record in the league. You know what well, I mean? Things are still looking up, and uh, I'm sure that's probably your final thoughts on the game. That pretty much wraps up the uh, the game. And I don't think I really have anything. Else. I mean, listen, yeah, we lost no, the game. Exactly. I had a feeling you hadn't had. You we got said beat, it all already. and now we're going to move on to this week. Not right now. LeBron's stat of the game, though, Jalen Hurts' rushing touchdown was the 31st of his career, tying Josh Allen for the second most by a quarterback through his first four seasons in the NFL. Who gives a fuck? Dude, we got to stop. But we got to get a better <laughs> LeBron stat than this. If there's no LeBron, if there's no good one, then we can't just pull one out of our ass. The only person uh, ahead of those two is uh, Cam Newton with 33. And I only say that because shout out to Cam Newton, one of my favorite yeah. football players of all time. There you go. All right, breaking news. 
as we're recording hey. per Adam Scheffner, seven-time Pro Bowler, a wide receiver, Julio Jones, is signing a one-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a wild pickup, man, but fuck, that's a hell of a... I mean, if he comes out and plays like Julio Jones can play, I mean... That's a damn good fucking pickup. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say. I mean, welcome to the team, brother. All right, now. We will take big, fast, athletic freaks of nature any day of the week. (laughs) We already had a great receiving core, and this is just going to add to it. Quez has had some injury things going on, and OZ, I mean, he's done really good in certain situations. But he had a huge – you know, one of the things I love is when a guy, like, very unselfishly picks up a block late in a play. You know what I mean? Like hustles down to go pick up something for his teammate who just caught the ball. And, you know, definitely saw that from OZ a couple games ago. You know, AJ Brown's obviously been having a, I mean, I think he's the second in receiving yards this season. Yeah, he's pretty good. Pink shoes over there, man. That guy, probably get him the ball. Not doing too shabby. But yeah, Julio's beyond just being the player he is. He's been on teams that have been really successful college and the NFL. You know, this guy, I'm, I'm assuming, I've never met him, admittedly, but generally when you're around that much greatness, uh, it, it rubs off on you or you're the one that's uh, doing the rubbing off of. So I have a feeling that this guy, that he's just going to be good to have around the building, be, in the, be a part of the team, and he's going to bring value to our organization. So uh, welcome to the team, brother. All righty. It's time to shout out one of our uh, next sponsors. It's uh, the Experience Smart Money uh, trademark debit card and the digital checking account. Which, Trav, I have to say, the commercial you did for this is yep. uh, some of your best work yet. Ah, why, thank you. It's on point. I appreciate that, man. Might not be the only one you see from uh, oh. Experian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Might have another one. But this was a lot of fun shooting this thing, man. Uh, how did you feel about my my like real acting performance? Could you tell that I was pretty pretty pumped up to see my guy with no debt? Yeah. I mean, listen, if there's few things that I know that fire up Travis, it's somebody with no debt and a high credit score. I know what a low credit score and a lot of debt feels like. <laughs> and uh, Not to get good. out of that hole, man, fuck, it's like having shackles on it, just breaking them off. Yeah, that's difficult. Check out my commercial on the uh, Experian YouTube channel if you haven't seen it. And yet, more importantly, the 92 percenters, check out the all-new Experian Smart Money debit card and digital checking account. It could help you build credit without the debt. That's right. Not going to lie. I wish I had this back in the day. I think uh, we both do. Kind of already talked about this. My, my credit score would have been a lot better if we would have did this. No question. I paid for everything with the debit card and didn't build any credit uh, for years because um, I didn't really have a credit card and I didn't couldn't apply for one because I didn't have a job, but I was paying for stuff, which means I should have been having a better credit score. Anyway, this really sets this uh this apart. It really does. The uh the digital checking account is automatically connected to Experian Boost, which helps build your credit. It just makes sense. Just use your Experian Smart Money account for uh eligible monthly bill payments like uh utilities, like your cell phone bill. What else? Streaming bills. Electric uh, bill. Yeah, uh, everything water man. bill. Streaming to raise your credit scores, man. Yeah, you can do it all. All you 92%ers out there should make sure to get your hands on an Experian Smart Money debit card and digital checking account at Experian.com slash Kelsey. Again, to get your Experian Smart Money debit card and digital checking account, go to Experian.com slash Kelsey. Experian is not a bank. Experian boost results will vary. See terms uh, at Experian.com slash legal. We had to say that. Legally. Alrighty, if there's one thing you know about this show, it's that on occasion there is a giant dog behind me. And you've probably been wondering just what the hell it is I feed that thing. And the answer is the farmer's dog. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. And it's developed by vets, um, yep. nutritionally balanced, and made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. Ooh. Well, uh, and my wife prefers that they eat this over uh, gophers in the backyard. (laughs) It's uh, the best option for dogs in all stages of life, and that's because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. They also send food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash newheights. Plus, you get free shipping. How about that? 
Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash new heights to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. All righty. Let's get to a, a segment we haven't seen in a little bit, and that's out of the house. That's right. Jason, did you get out of the house? Well, I think we both did, but let's get All to right, your man. out of the house first. T-Rav on SNL. How about that? It's your boy to boy. Trav, not only did you show up to the Eagles game in uh, in New York on Sunday, but you also made it to Saturday Night Live. Got out the house, man. You've obviously hosted Saturday Night Live, uh, but you made a guest. Ap- this, is this your first guest appearance on Saturday Night Live? Yep. Wow. Yeah. I feel like awesome, that's man. when you've really, if you're like welcomed on to just be like a guest, that's pretty spectacular. I mean, I, if you're going to say that, yeah, for sure. It was uh, it was every bit of spectacular. Is it rarer to be a guest or rarer to host? Because there's some episodes that there's no guests. It's just the host, right? Yeah. So I think it's rarer to be a guest. I think that's like, that's another upper echelon of Saturday Night Live. Are you trying to pat yourself on the fucking back for being a guest? I wasn't a guest. I was I was a family of the guy hosting. I wasn't a guest. You were a guest. I don't I don't think that's a guest. A guest is like, you know. You trying to say me and Pete Davidson are family? I'm trying to say a guest is like, this guy's so famous and he happens to be in town that we're going to find a way to get him on the show. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That was not what happened to me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. SNL had a great sketch about uh, the Swift mania and the NFL and uh, who should show up at the very end. But, uh, but the big Yeti himself, all two lines up. What did, what did you see? Said? I don't even remember what I said. I blacked out. <laughs> I um as soon as they as soon as they cued to me, um yeah. the entire place erupted, which was, good. was very uh, overwhelming. And I'm not even sure if I said anything. Yeah, so I think I actually I I walked off. I said, "Did I say anything at all?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody's like, "Yeah, no, you killed it." And I looked at, I watched it over, and I, I, I still don't. Really know if I said what they were. I was supposed to. We showed up at SNL having having the uh, the idea of going supporting Ice Spice. Uh, her and Taylor nice. are good friends. I've always wanted to meet Pete Davidson. Been a fan of his for uh, for quite a while since he was actually on the show or uh, on SNL. I mean, and I'll tell you what, man, it was electric to be back in that place. Dude, it's, There's it's just crazy something how much energy's about in there. being in that that room and just it being their first episode this season i had such a freaking blast man was uh it was a, a star-studded back room I, i'm not the one to throw around names so i won't but it was uh it was awesome man it was awesome and uh lord michael thank you for having us it was uh it was a pleasure i didn't know i didn't know what the skit was like what skits were coming up and i'm pretty sure that it was just ironic that they were doing a skit on uh would you call the it NFL? the, the swift mania yeah yeah it was, uh, but I thought it was hilarious. And when they asked me to be a part of it, I was like, man, I'd be honored. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, That's it was cool. pretty cool. And then, uh, Taylor also made the surprise cameo, uh, introducing, uh, her good friend, Ice Spice. Nice. Who absolutely killed it as well, Ice. You guys got out of the house after that, even later, by going to the Saturday Night Live after party, which, for those of you that don't know, uh, it, it goes all night. It was fun catching up with everybody over in SNL, man. I miss those miss those guys and uh, guys and girls, I should say. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, I win it or Jason wins it and we find ourselves back. <laughs> Well, after uh, you got out of the house on Saturday, you went to the game Sunday, and then you found your way to lovely South Philadelphia uh, for uh, the Phillies game. Yes, I did. Where we got to enjoy a beautiful evening of Philadelphia Phillies baseball. Oh, yeah. Got to meet you and Kai down at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Hey, yo. And I'll tell you what, that place was fucking electric. (laughs) Dude, Red October, baby. The first pitch, Ohioan himself, Schwarber. Oh, yeah. Out of the fucking park. Yard, Man, Middleton. I'll tell you what, he, he hits the fucking piss out of the ball. He does, bringing the power right off the gate. And then right after him, only a couple batters later. That boy, nice. Who was it the next batter? The Storm and Mormon. Two? two batters after that. Trey Turner was two, right? Was I drinking that many beers already? It's one hundred. He's 100% in the third. The third Bryce is, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. The cool thing about the Schwarber ball was it hit the uh it hit the jumbotron or whatever that, that like screen. The mini jumbotron. 
and it just rested there so we could look at it the whole freaking game. Yeah. I thought that was pretty neat. But Just the whole time, you're just thinking, how the fuck could we get that ball? Yes. How, could I scale that? Could I somehow scale that and get that baseball? <laughs> He started taking pictures and videos of it. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, the game was absolutely electric. Uh, I forget the uh, the gentleman. Uh, I forget what is his name. I think it's Byron Scott. You're talking about his come out song? Yeah. St- I think it's Stott. S-T-O-T-T. Gosh, I should have fucking did my research before I came on the show. But yeah, most electric come out song in the stadium. The whole crowd starts singing it. Bryson Stott. The, uh, one of the most electric parts of the evening after those two home runs, Bryson Stott, is that his name? Bri- yeah. Bryson Stott? S-T-O-T-T. Interesting. Yeah. Either way, he's got the A-OK uh, song. It's an electric come out song. And the entire stadium just saw two first inning home runs by two of the like biggest names on their team. So everybody's standing up and screaming their lungs out, singing this song. And I just happened to get it on video, not knowing that that's what was coming. Yeah. I'll put that thing as one of the, one of my favorite videos to watch. I love atmospheres like that. Like when I'm walking up to your games or whenever I like, I, I'll walk straight through the, the front door and like go through the ticket, like scan my ticket and, Make sure that I I just love walking up to stadiums knowing I'm going to a game. It's the one of the only things that make me feel like a kid again. Like I'm going to this exciting ballpark or this, you know, I'm about to go and watch some of the greatest, you know, athletes of all time go at it. And it's just that there's something about going to the ballpark that I'll just yeah. uh, I'll never lose, man. And I absolutely loved it, man. Baseball, I I know it doesn't it hasn't like, I guess, done as well in modern like uh, TV deals or whatever, uh, like the audience viewing it on TV. But I still think there are a few things better than going to the ballpark and watching a game live. It's something about being at Especially a baseball playoff game. playoff baseball. In playoffs? What about playoffs? playoffs? <laughs> Tell you what, man. Yeah, Red October in Philly is, is, a, is a different atmosphere, man. Yeah, that was awesome. The fans are into it. This team has great energy right now. I was, I'm, I'm going to admit, I was, I wanted to go to the game. We talked about it before. You coming down about going to the Phillies game yeah. after losing to uh, the Jets? You did not. I was like, go. man, do I really want to be seen at this place? And you know, I want to make sure that we're focused, and I don't want to. But I was like, you know what? Screw it, man. I don't know how many more games I'm going to get to go do like this. And, and they went. They I am went so happy nuts. we went. <laughs> Dude, it's just so electric. Just get out of the house, man. You need that gang and that gang. You need that balance, man. I don't want to get out of the house that much, but I'll get I'll get out of the house for this. Get out of the house with old Travi, man. Come on, dude. Let's do this, man. <laughs> Thankfully, Kai Kai was there and was kind of like, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet if we went. Kai, I could yeah. tell that she was like the final, like, well, maybe if Kai wants to go, I'll go. And I'm just exactly. Like, oh, yeah, I, she I was. Almost text her like, Kai, let's go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get Jason out of the house? I really want to go to the game with these guys. Got to love getting flicked off by some of the uh, – Philly fans. You got um, flicked off? Oh yeah. It was it was like a love no flick. Way. I love you. <laughs> it was straight to the it was with a smile. It was like ha, ha, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, nice man. I deserve that. I deserve every bit of that. They uh they did show you on the uh on the Jubotron. Yeah. Yeah. And the place erupted. You know what I mean? Like it's you could tell that the Philly fans, you know, might might be disappointed in it, but they know they got one of the best football teams in the uh in the league. They just erupt because they want me to chug my beer. That they don't care about me. They're just like, I'm gonna force this guy to chug his beer. Ah! And then it's like, well, now I can't. What do I do with this thing? I can't he just not chug my beer. Give me this, give me this koozie. Chug this thing. Yeah. What they don't want to see is us. What do you mean? Go chugging off, like having a chug off. That's what they don't want to see. Why do they not want to see that, Travis? Well, because they know I win. Travis, stop. What do you mean? We already know this. This has been this has been settled the past like three chugs that we've had. I do not. First of all, I can't remember the last time we have chugged off. You can't remember the new heights. You didn't finish your beer. Show? There was beer flying out of your beer, and we weren't even racing. We were just doing a shotgun. No, but we were racing. It wasn't a race. It was just like, hey, we're going to shotgun these beers together. This guy acts like he has no competitive nature. He knows it was a fucking race. First of all, you can go back to that tape. There's beer flying out of your can. You just threw your can and it was acted all like foam. you were done. It was no, all foam. It was not. No, all foam. 
I heard liquid beers. hitting the black wooden floor of that You heard stage. it? Yeah, I did. You heard it? I heard it. And, I was he, like, and this guy says it a, wasn't a race. It wasn't you're a race. Here, you're so fucking It wasn't ridiculous. a race, but I... I, right, well, I what about... Uh, what whether about, it's a uh, race or not, you always drink all the beer in the can. So when I heard... As fast as you can. When I, heard, I don't as care fast if it's fast or not. When, if it's not a race, but you, whether you're racing as fast as you can or just drinking it, you don't leave drink. liquid coming out of the, the can. And I heard liquid foam. coming out of the, the can. We're, we're pretty close, with it, regardless. I tend to try and forget my losses too, man. But yeah, no, we're uh, it's always <laughs> it's always a good race. But. All right. Well, we can do one more. Uh, I'll race you right now, bro. More uh, set up in a uh, uh, legitimate whenever you want. We can we can figure that out. Yeah. Legitimate? Are we going to fucking stand at both sides of the table like we're about to arm wrestle? Yeah. Do you want to chug a leader? Me, you, I'll me chug versus a leader. you? I, listen, you didn't want to chug the leader. I, I was like, oh, yeah, chug the leader, dude. <laughs> I'll go Das Boot against you. I, I don't mind. All right. We'll do the leader chug. Gosh, I'd want to fucking beat you right now. <laughs> No, it was fun, man. It was a uh, it was a good time, and I'm glad we got to experience that, man. I'm with you. Joe Torrey slid in there, man. Said Joe Torrey did slide in man. There. Do a yeah, lot of the coaches. Legend. Joe Torrey, uh, Jay Wright, Don Staley. A lot, lot of a uh, lot of coaching up there. It's cool. Week six roundup. Let's get to some player insights of the NFL storylines. All right, back to football. Let's give some quick thoughts about the biggest headlines of week six. The Browns took down the undefeated 49ers. Oh, we can't forget we, Tim McGraw. We forgot to mention we met Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. How could we forget Tim McGraw? Dude, he looked good, too. I don't oh, know like, guy, what he's, he's doing. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, know what I mean? Know. Whatever lifting and tanning bed he's using, he's yeah, working, man. He was AG1. glowing. He's probably drinking it's, AG1. He is, he, I, I, I bet my left nut he's taking AG1. Not my right. But my left. Not the right. The right's that's the home run hitter. The Browns were led by backup quarterback PJ Walker and overcame a 10 point deficit to win the game on a 29 yard field goal. Yeah. Shout out to PJ Walker, man. Heck, he was just down in uh, Carolina, not having the best year, and now he's winning football games for the Brownies. Let's go, Brownies! Dude, the Browns? That defense is fucking good. Talk about a good D-line. Jim that Schwartz. That is a good defense, man. And that's not taking anything away from what their offense is. They're, they're obviously a good team if they're beating the 49ers. Jake Moody missed a 41-yard field goal with nine seconds left as, uh, as the 49ers uh, kicker. And um, that would have sealed the deal for him, I believe. Yeah. It's just a, just a bit outside. The Browns allowed 1,000 yards this season. The fewest yards allowed 52 years in Cleveland, and the third fewest yards allowed by a team in its first five games of a. This is a fucking LeBron stat. Holy we gotta shit. Stop. We, we got to stop out of here with these with stats. These. And LeBron, I'm sorry if it feels like we're like attacking you with these. Uh, you didn't start LeBron stats. The <laughs> TNT and like the NBA did. We just needed something to like clarify that topic. And uh, that is a fucking bogus ass stat. Um, Brown's defense finished this game with three sacks and one interception. Kyle Shanahan has faced Jim Schwartz nine times. Shanahan used to be a brownie himself, man. Shanahan's one in eight of those matchups, though. Uh, and his offense has scored uh, over 20 points just once. So why do you think Jim Schwartz has been so dominant? Well, one is, you know, he's a great defensive coordinator and he's been good wherever he's been. Yeah. Jim's defensive philosophy, the way he has those guys play defense, um, it's all predicated on the defensive line. They play aggressive. It's all about getting across the ball, penetrating, getting to the quarterback. And he's got the horses up front. In Cleveland, I mean, they're they're good across the board. I'm not trying to take away from the secondary or the linebackers, but in my opinion, when I think of Jim Schwartz defenses, I think about defensive linemen. I think about aggression, uh, explosion off the ball. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's very, uh, and you're seeing more and more teams do it and try and replicate it. Always talking about knockback or getting to the quarterback. It's worked wherever he's been, and. Uh, it's it certainly started off well in Cleveland, and that helps when you have guys like, you know, Miles Garrett, and you got um, uh, Zadarius Smith. Although is Zadarius, um, he's not hurt now, is he? No, he was out there in full he's effect. There? He was in and, full effect last game. And um, oh my gosh, I played against this guy all the time in New York. Uh, was just in Minnesota. Um, he's a good player, really good player, defensive tackle. Fuck. Um, from Alabama. No, they don't have a good players in Alabama. Fuck. Dalvin Thomas. Anyways, yeah, when you got guys like that, they're going to be really, really good on defense. I think that uh, that's a big reason why Jim's had so much success 
on top of him just being one of the best defensive coordinators uh, over the past few decades in the NFL in general. So Sounds like them boys are coachable. Heard that. Let's keep this thing moving to the Dolphins beating the Panthers. 42-21, the highlight of the game. Uh. Tyreek Hill's 41-yard touchdown in the second quarter. Cheetah took the phone from a guy on the sideline, holds it while he does a backflip. The angle of this selfie video was pretty sick. Check this out. So do you, like, practice this? Or do you just whip it out? Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Touchdown. Know. Hey, what's up? Oh, give me that. He goes hey, right to hey. the phone. This is this is pre setup. That's wild, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty good. That's some good stuff right there. Man. I mean, I'd love that to be on my phone. Right, it's a historical video right there. But uh, I sell an NFT on that. Make some right pretty now. good change. <laughs> not right now. That boy trying to make some money. That boy Tyreek trying to make some money. <laughs> the guy is absolutely killing it this year. Tyreek looks as. Looks like the best wide receiver in the NFL, like I've said for a very long time. Stat wise, he he is right. Yeah. How far in advance do you think he played? He planned that thing out. I don't know, but it was I definitely think those are instincts. Out. I don't. Th- I think those are instincts because no he was There's running no past it and then he saw the camera on him. He just no. looked at it like, yeah. The moment this, he got into the end flip. zone, he went straight for that specific person. No, I don't think so. Only one way to figure this out. We got to have him on the show. Gotta have him on the show. Tyree, come on, dog. (laughs) Come on, man. Come bless the show, big guy. The only thing I'm taking away from this is that the NFL should definitely allow props for touchdown celebrations, right? I just feel like we should be embracing touchdown celebrations. It's gonna get too wild. It's gonna gonna get like like basketball. Yes. You remember the basketball scene? (laughs) Psych outs. No, no, the uh, the beginning of the movie basketball. Yes, when they're all doing like the uh, the river dancing or whatever. It's already everybody's dancing together, yeah. But you start bringing in props, it's it's going to get so fucking out of control. We can't do that. That's fair. Can't have too much fun. Not so many games to really talk about. Is that, that's the only thing that happened across the league. <laughs> Last week was a weird-ass game, man. The only thing that really happened was that the two undefeated teams didn't remain undefeated. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up again. All the other games were kind of just like, meh. Well, 12 of the 15 games were uh, within one score, which... Uh, in the fourth quarter, with uh, 10 games being decided by one score. What the fuck? Dude, I can't read either. In week six, 12 of the 15 games were within one score uh, in the fourth quarter, with 10 games having been decided by one score. <laughs> Who's writing these stats down, Trev? The cutest guy we know. I think it's Emma, actually. Brandon is... Is it? Yeah, let's just keep Brandon. Let's blame Brandon. No, I'm blaming Brandon. Emma's done nothing wrong and will never do anything wrong. We'll never do anything wrong. Fair enough. Don't ever fucking, (laughs) don't you even try it. Offenses are currently scoring touchdowns on 53.3% of their red zone opportunities, the lowest rate through six weeks since 2011. We we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It feels like a lot of times the NFL goes in waves where – Offenses are kind of doing some new innovative things that defenses are trying to catch up with and vice versa. And it feels like right now in the league, it feels like the defenses have been having the better half of uh, of, of the beginning of the season, which is standard. Like typically early in the season, defenses perform better. Offenses, well, I think it's kind of like either the offenses are blowing people out. Yeah, we might need to get this stat. That's a good point. I think a stat would be interesting to see if that backs it up. I do. This is what I think. Early in the season, you see more extremes where it's like teams getting blown out or teams like putting up no points. But I do. I just think in general, it's easier for a defense to gel quickly than it is for an offense to gel quickly. Like I think timing on with routes and receivers and quarterbacks and like there's more going on offensively. I don't know, man. You don't think that's true? I think of it scheme wise, and I'm like, there's new formations, there's new pieces. You got to figure yeah. out how the defense is going to pass these things off in zone, how they're going to match up in man. I just feel like there's a lot more question to what an offense can run, and I think typically it's like the first like month to a month and a half or half of the season, the offenses are just, just like doing stuff that the defense isn't quite ready for. And then towards the end of the year, you know what the defense or you know what an offense's makeup is. You know how guys are going to get the ball. You know how what this certain receiver or this certain running backs, you know, what their role is in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I guess I'm more thinking about like right away in training camp, 
usually the defense is kicking the offense's ass for the first couple of weeks. You know why I don't do training camp? Why? Because our scripted plays are on it's the annoying. same iPad it's so as the defense. <laughs> it is so annoying. When in you practice. got the middle linebacker calling out exactly what you're about Watch to do, and it's, the, it's Bro, like, what, what the fuck, fuck made you think to say that? How did you know <laughs> that we were running? And even more so, we're in team pass. We're in. Yeah, we do. We do a. <laughs> a three man route or we'll have like a certain downfield route and it'll be drop eight. And you're just like, why, why is every That's time coincident or every time we got a screen, they're blitz on the opposite side of the screen. It's like, why is that? It's like a, so it's such a unique call. Every time we call a screen, <laughs> I know what you're up to spags. I know what you're over there doing. And on top of that, uh, I just looked at this stat that you just read. And uh, this is the lowest the offense has uh, performed since uh, 2011. So that's over like 10 years ago. I just think it goes in waves like this. There's always, whenever defenses are kind of doing stuff that often, it's the same thing. Well, when you're in Neanderthal and you've played over 10 years, yeah, it does. Well, it's the same thing you were just talking about. When some Sometimes the offense is the ones doing new things that defenses are trying to catch up with. And sometimes it's the defense is doing new thing, new things that the offense are trying to catch up with. Offense has not figured it out yet. Yeah. The defense seems to be on fire in the NFL so yeah. far, especially in the red zone defense. Now let's fucking go, man. Let's go, man. Let's get, let's get moms like Donna Kelsey happy about offense again. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Come on, man. We got to fucking got to make mom proud out here, man. All righty. That's it. That wraps up week six. Trav, take it over. All right, now let's hand out some stamps of the week to guys who took their game to new heights in week six of the NFL season. And that doesn't mean we're just going to talk football here. We can talk anything because it's our show and people are taking their game to new heights everywhere in this world. Hey, oh, new Heights stamp of the week is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. That's right. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Man, I used to fucking be able to hit the high notes way better, man. Dude, that's what happens when you yell all the time. Yeah. I had a very uh, cool text this morning. Um, one of Cleveland Heights' own and University of Wisconsin hockey forward, Layla Edwards. hey Shout out to Layla Edwards. She's set to become the first black woman to play for Team USA Senior hockey team. That's right. For the U.S. women's national team will face Canada in the opening two contests of the 2023-24 rivalry series in November. And uh, Layla's going to be the first black woman to do it. Hey, and Cleveland Heights native, maybe. Has there ever been a Cleveland Heights native on that team? You know, uh, I think she might have. She might be the first she might in be both the of first. those categories. I know, she has cool. a, I know she has a little sister at the University of Wisconsin, so she might have. Uh, might, you know those be siblings, up here in a siblings bit. out of All the right. heights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tend to do good things. <sighs> did she go to Cleveland Heights or did, is she just from Cleveland Heights? I think she's just from Cleveland Heights. I think uh, as uh, most hockey superstars in the Cleveland area, you uh, you go to prep school and you do uh, you do that route. You're probably right. So either way, but either shout way, out to I the heights. She, shout out to Layla. Least, yeah, I hope she at least went through the Cleveland Heights School District at some point or really um, just being from the city. Yeah. You got my love and support. Go out there and hold it down for USA, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, who you got? I'm going to go. I'm going to keep it in the offensive line category. I'm going to go with uh, Giants left guard, Justin Pugh. Ooh. You know, players have been doing uh, intros for games for a long time, and it used to be pretty standard, your name and the college you went to. 100%. Then guys started getting creative, and they're like, yo, hey. Uh, they started saying their elementary school or their high school or their preschool. Yeah. And I thought Justin Pugh had maybe the most honest take when he was recently signed um, a few weeks ago. Uh, in his player intro this week when he's playing is uh, Justin Pugh, straight off the couch. Straight off the couch. All right, now. Thought that was pretty awesome. Pretty clever, pretty funny. I feel like almost, mostly all offensive linemen have a good sense of humor. It's, it's pretty true. Shout out to Jay Pugh, man. Fellow podcaster. Yeah. Uh, everybody go check out Net Worth with, uh, with Justin Pugh. Fellow 20, 2013 draft class. Um, remember meeting him up there and uh, having some fun uh, up the uh, combine. It's awesome to see him getting off the couch and uh, and playing some football, baby. So, yeah, baby. Uh, go check out his podcast and check out the the Giants, baby. Congrats on taking your game to new heights. 
Alrighty, that wraps up another episode of New Heights. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when new episodes are coming out. And make sure you check out our bonus videos that launch later in the week this Friday. We'll, be, uh, we'll preview our Week 7 games and play some more clips uh, that you guys have suggested. And uh, listen, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. You heard that, man. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. And this episode is presented by the all-new Experience Smart Money Debit Card, the debit card that builds credit without the debt. Uh. Oh, follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. And thanks to our production and crew, always Brandon, Emma, Jets, Jake, you can still fuck off. We love TD. you, though. Yeah. And everyone else involved. We love yeah. you guys. Always making us look good. The 92%ers always for tuning in. We love you guys. Peace. We'll see you later on.